Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and today's episode takes us a little further into 1 John. We'll be looking at chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, to talk about why we should not love the world. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope. And that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're looking at 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, which read, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. There were several things that came to mind as I read and meditated on today's scripture passage. The first is why John tells us not to love the world or anything in the world. And I felt like the answer to that question is because when we become followers of Christ, we are no longer of the world. We do not belong to the world anymore, and therefore, we should not love the world anymore. In John's gospel, in chapter 17, before Jesus is arrested, John records Jesus' prayer to the Father for himself, for his disciples, and for all believers. In verses 13 through 19, Jesus prays, I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Part of the transformation in our lives, when we give our lives to Christ, is a shedding of the old self. It's a removal of the worldly ways and adopting the ways of Jesus. This is a process that we must continually work on because the devil doesn't stop trying to distract you just because you decided you were going to follow Jesus. In fact, he may even try to throw more temptation at you as you are trying to break from old patterns, old behaviors, and old habits because, let's face it, that's just how he is. As John says in verse 16, for everything in the world... The cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. The devil is the prince of this world, and he is the father of lies. It is his goal to pull you away from God by any means necessary. John's words in verse 16 make me think about what are known as the seven deadly sins. Lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. 
It also stirs within me a desire to have a little check-in with myself and the Holy Spirit to see if any of these are permeating any areas of my life right now. Because we tend to get caught up in the day-to-day living of our lives. You know, we tend to get busy. We tend to get focused on other things, on, you know, concerned with the affairs of our household and making sure that everything's going the way it's supposed to and all of this stuff. And sometimes when we get caught up in our day-to-day living, sometimes things can start to creep in undetected if we're not making a habit of regular check-ins to evaluate ourselves. If you aren't sure how to do this or you don't know where to start on this, try starting with this question. What's in my heart today? Simple, right? You know, are there any unresolved feelings of anger or envy? Am I consciously and actively practicing gratitude for every good thing God has given me? Do I have any misplaced pride right now? Regardless of the answers, because listen, the Holy Spirit can help you with whatever the answers are if you invite him in and you do any work that needs to be done, right? So regardless of the answers, I think the most important thing is for you to become more aware of what's going on within yourself. The more aware you are of what's going on inside you, the better and easier you can recognize when something isn't right. When the world is trying to come up in you instead of the love of God, the better you know you, the better you are able to quickly recognize thoughts that can take you down a path that God doesn't intend for you to go down. And instead of chasing those thoughts, you can say no and redirect. You can ask Jesus to take that thought captive. You can remind yourself that those thoughts are not from God and shift your thoughts to something that is from God. When I catch myself veering into a lane of thought traffic that I don't belong in, (laughs) I will often say, sometimes out loud, nope, that's not how I want to think. And then redirect my thoughts to gratitude, thanking God for something. And it, it doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's something that I am grateful for. It can be that I woke up. It can be that my husband came home safely. It can be that the sunshine was beautiful today. It can be anything. But it's redirecting my thoughts away from something that I don't need to go into detail on. I don't need to obsess over it. I don't need to be over here in this thoughts of what ifs and and the destructive thoughts that are going to tear down the rest of my day. I can ask him to remove those thoughts from my mind. And in doing so, as I'm bringing in thoughts that are from God, those other thoughts are no longer there. Friends, we have way more power than we realize to control our thoughts. That doesn't mean that you have control necessarily over what pops up in your mind, but you do have complete control over how long you let that thought linger. You do have control over how much attention you give that thought when it pops up. We have that control, which in turn gives us control over our words and our actions. When we control our, we control our thoughts, which means we also control our words and our actions. Don't get it twisted, friends. You have control over your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Do not give that control away to anyone or anything else. It is yours. Take responsibility for it. Be accountable for it. God created us with incredibly powerful minds, and he also gave us the tools and the resources to focus our thoughts on him, on his will for our lives, on protecting our minds from the enemies. Hello, go into Ephesians chapter 6 and read about putting on the full armor of God. He's given us the tools and the resources. 
He's given us the Holy Spirit, and he has given us his word. And those are the two most powerful weapons we could ever possess. All we have to do is use them. John gives us a great reminder in verse 17. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Friends, temptation is temporary. No matter what it is, no matter how good you think it's going to make you feel, it's only temporary. But the joy and the peace that come from trusting God, from choosing to follow him and not the world, that is eternal. That lasts forever. So today, choose wisely, my friends. Thank you, friend, for being here with me today, y'all. It truly is such a blessing to be on this journey with you. And I want to know what's on your heart and what's on your mind today. So leave me a comment or send me a message and let me know. I also want to let you know that if you feel like you're in need of a little extra prayer today, I would be honored to stand in the gap and pray for you. I believe that there is indeed power in prayer, especially as we are praying for each other. So if you feel like that's something you need today, I invite you to visit my website, which is www.crystalfry.com forward slash ministry, and you can send your prayer request there. Come back and join me for our next episode where I will be chatting up John Jarman, author of the book Broken and Redeemed. John is a Marine Corps veteran of Desert Storm, a former football coach, and a professional fitness coach who saw his life radically transformed by his complete surrender to God. And friends, I cannot wait for you to hear his redemption story. Until then. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.